to introduce uh, myself a little bit. I'm Adrian, I'm Education Working Group Coordinator for two years. And uh, part of this, I'm a research engineer and, uh, at Ampere Laboratory in France. Um, I have uh, touched my first uh, blade uh, at the Wind Energy Laboratory in Crete in 2015, where I uh, instrument instrumented an ASTM generator test rig. And then I met Jay, that uh, will talk uh, during this panel. Uh, and that is the founder of TL, and uh, where I developed uh, an analog uh, charger controller uh, that was uh, already launched, but I improved it. And uh, we built uh, six wind, wind turbines together with a uh, Tripalium, the French uh, network for the Pigos wind turbine. Uh, and then in, uh, at the end of this year, uh, I went to India to present this controller and to help with the organization of the Wind Empowerment uh, India conference. Um, and this year, I also participated to the organization. And currently, I'm uh, researching on small wind turbines optimization, uh, taking into account uh, the generator uh, and uh, the electronics uh, side. Um, so uh, today we have um, we are very lucky to have a diversified and complementary set of panelists uh, for this uh, working group session. Um, we'll have uh, Jay Hodnor that I just talked about that will talk about uh, developing small wind through education and education small wind, so vice versa. Um, then uh, so it's this first part is, uh, is about um, is about like uh, different um, environments of uh, education. So Jay has experience in France and abroad, uh, and uh, Nick Warren uh, will uh, talk about his experience on uh, practical education tailored to uh, pupil interaction across social societal bounds uh, in Peru. And uh, we'll have the, the chance also to have Karen Olivier, founder of uh, a consulting uh, and also is uh, teaching wind turbine uh, in Africa, Ivory Coast, uh, with energy in the box solutions, promoting small wind technology from local materials. Um, last uh, but not least, we have uh, Manuel Perez, that is member of 500 RPM in Argentina, and I will uh, present. Uh, a new tool that they launched uh, online to teach online uh, small wind turbine courses. And uh, to finish, uh, we have uh, Damian Planes, that is also a member of uh, 500 RPM, and that um, will uh, present uh, how uh, wind turbine 3D wind kits uh, could be a very good pedagogical support. Um, so, um, at the end of this, uh, we will talk uh, about the uh, Wiki Hackathon, which is uh, hold, uh, held by the work Education Working Group, but that could be uh, shared with other working groups. And uh, before going on all that, uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, the Education Working Group and what uh, we have done so far these two, two last years. Um, I think this is all for the introduction. Let's move on. Okay, so uh, the weekend, the WE Education Working Group vision is to be the one stop knowledge base about locally manufactured small wind turbines. Uh, why this? Uh, it's because we want to facilitate small wind uh, project implementation wherever it has to be. Uh, and uh, so the, it means that the wherever you are, uh, the access to knowledge shouldn't be a problem. So how can we achieve that? Um, knowledge on uh, locally manufactured uh, small wind turbines uh, are uh, spread uh, into different uh, categories uh, according to the working groups that have been identified in the previous uh, years and in, in, during the construction of the Wind Empowerment Association. Uh, but uh, we feel uh, that the education working group uh, is a kind of a connection between all the other working groups because um, it, uh, it's actually about gathering knowledge and sharing this knowledge 
um, and um, sharing knowledge on the maintenance, learn how to repair and maintain, uh, enables the technology to be self-sustainable, like uh, to be sustainable and um, last in the time uh, in the, within the communities. Uh, so it's uh, an important part of the education uh, about locally manufactured small turbines. So we, uh, a manual has been created, and uh, we'll talk about uh, later in uh, the maintenance um, working group session. Um, about the technology, uh, you could learn manufacturing tricks and alternatives, uh, installation topologies, uh, etc. Uh, so this is another uh, aspect of uh, wind turbine uh, education, to be able to master the technology. Um, uh, education is another aspect too. Uh, it's about the, the art of uh, sharing and adapting the knowledge to the target public. And this, uh, yeah, this has to be taught actually. Um, so this is the role also uh, of, the, in the, of the working group education working group is to share educational material to help uh, practitioners and to and uh, workshop leaders to actually teach better their uh, wind courses. Uh, measurements, <clears throat> learn how to implement a test site and process that data in order to better perform market assessments and delivery models. <clears throat> so we can we can, we can say that the, the education uh, working group by sharing uh, all this knowledge uh, is the is a key of uh, enabling the locally manufactured small wind turbine uh, technology uh, so from mission to activities so to realize this vision and uh, <clears throat> to be this one stop uh, shop in terms of uh, knowledge for uh, small wind turbines um, we could, we identified uh, several goals. Uh, the first one is to adapt the knowledge to the target public, like to make it more digest. If we address, um, if we address uh, youth, uh, youth people, our children, or more academic, if we address uh, researchers. Um, another goal is to create knowledge repository. Uh, so, for example, uh, is gathering scientific articles, is uh, to write books, is to like have all the knowledge in one place. And the third one uh, is facilitating peer learning and improving wind apartment visibility. Um, so, for example, this could be achieved through webinars, uh, conferences like we are doing, etc. Uh, it's important, uh, it was important for us not to stay in the high spheres of uh, missions, visions, goals, etc., but to actually link with real terrain activities that we could do uh, together as a network and as a working group. Um, so activities like building a wiki seems like uh, really exciting for uh, a lot of people and uh, could be either a at the same time, uh, knowledge repository, facilitate peer learning, adapt the knowledge to the target public, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that that, got, that actually meets three goals at the same time: translate and post the educational material and tutorials too on this wiki, webinars, as I said, uh, projects, propose uh, projects to educational uh, entities, so um, like uh, go um, propose uh, to schools or to universities some wind courses and uh, also uh, propose them to document uh, on the wiki, etc. And uh, finally, lead an observatory on open knowledge has been identified as a crucial uh, step in uh, this phase of uh, sharing knowledge um, to be able to be at the tip of the arrow, as we say. <clears throat> Um, I think that's enough from uh, for the missions and uh, activities, and I hope this is clear. Uh, if you have any question about that, uh, we'll open a discussion uh, later on, and uh, you could uh, even propose ideas for activities or goals. Um, yeah. Um, before presenting the wiki hackathon, I think this is time for uh, the panel to start, actually. So, Jay, do you want to go on? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I uh, hope everybody has my screen on now. Yeah, we can see it. Is okay, yeah. good. So um, I'm Jay Hudnall. I, I started a small company in 2007, um, teaching people to build a small tra small wind turbines. And I did a first course with Hugh back in 2004. And so since then, I th we think we've built and installed over 150 small turbines. And um, so now what, what I'm doing most is uh, usually in a normal year, I do a 10 to 12 training courses, one week training courses to teach people about small wind. Uh, this year is an exceptional year, so I haven't done half of that, but uh, well, maybe five, five courses this year. And uh, hopefully I'll get started again in, uh, in 2001. And um, so now I'm doing uh, a little bit more installations and a little bit more, more maintenance work during the, uh, the, uh, the coronavirus uh, time. So um, what I'm going to talk to you guys today about is um, education for small wind and using small wind for education. Um, I think we've got a lot of potential with small wind to teach people um, how to do things and use small wind as a vehicle for teaching. So um, one thing, education um, can be a vehicle for helping developing small wind. And um, we can use education to teach people um, not only how to build a wind turbine, but uh, about woodworking, electrical systems, generator design. Um, there are lots of subjects around this. And a lot of this came for, for me from working with you in the first training course and back in 2004. Um, when we did a training course teaching people to build a turbine, it's the, the first time I had participated in a, in a training course. And I spent much more time looking for material and trying to figure out how things could work. And, and okay, this is not the right uh, car hub and this is not the right wood and these bolts have to be changed and this has to be, and running around a lot. But really what I learned from that training course was um, how to share knowledge. And that's something we, we talk about is um, learning by competence through competence, approach by competence. And so the idea is really, as I explain to you how it works, so uh, we have a little session where we explain people, this is going to, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to work on these blades. This is how the tool works. This is how the, uh, the spoke shave works. This is how the rabo works, the, the plane works. And, and then I'll show you. So I'll use the tool and show you how it's going to work. And then you do it with my help so I can help you work on it. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll correct you if it's necessary, if I see you're doing it wrong or if you're risking to uh, catch fire with the angle grinder or other things. And one thing that I, I left out on this slide that I realize now is, is also then having the person explain it to others because that way we teach the person to become a teacher. And so I should add a, a fifth line on here. Now I ask you to explain what you've been doing and how the angle grinder works, for example, in this photo to the other students. So I got started uh, in small wind. Well, my first step was working at a, a training center, a training center, a test site in uh, Texas, in Bushland, Texas, um, at the US Department of Agriculture, where I spent four months as an intern um, working on small wind. Um, and then getting back to France, I worked for Krug Wind from 2004 to 2007, where we organized the first training course at Hue in France. Um, we had more courses in, in 2005 and 2007. Um, but then I was doing mainly installations of uh, industrial machines. So uh, machines that had been built in a factory somewhere and were traveling out to the other side of France to install a wind turbine and you miss a piece or you're, uh, there's a problem with the, the blades that don't correspond with the size of the generator. And then you, you got to figure out either way to fix it or go back to the workshop and wait till the company sends you the pieces for it. Whereas at least with the home-built machines, you can usually figure out a, a solution for any sort of problem. Also, one thing that I really learned working for 
um, Olivier Krug in Krugwind is the, the problem is we were installers. And so the client doesn't actually know anything. Um, the installer has all the power because he's the only person that can help the client. And so the client can't repair their proper wind turbine. Um, they're reliant on you, even for the smallest of repairs. If they have to lower the wind turbine or raise the wind turbine, they don't know how it works. A lot of times we wanted to even sell a, um, a grip hoist with the turbine. So the, the client couldn't even lower and raise the wind turbine by themselves. Um, this isn't really fair uh, for me, uh, either for the client who is, uh, is beholden to the installer or to the installer because it's no fun going out to a client's place just because there's a really small problem with the wind turbine that he could easily fix himself. Um, it's expensive. And a lot of times you don't make your money back on, on things like this because traveling out 300 or 400 kilometers to do a maintenance, um, it's difficult to factor the, or to build the client for the, the real cost of the travel time and, and the work on the wind turbine. If all you have to do is grease the bearings and, and put the wind turbine back up. So it's really important that the client learns about small wind and he learns how to do his maintenance himself. He learns how to repair his wind turbine. He learns how it was made. Um, it's really something I learned at Krug Wind. And when I left in 2007, my idea was really to start a company about teaching people and teaching to use how to small wind. And for me, it was the only solution to installing small wind is that people know how it works and know how to run their machine and maintain their Aeolian, their wind turbine, sorry. So in, when I left uh, Krug, we started an association, which is called Tripalium. At the same time, the company Tiol, my, my small wind turbine company. But for the, the Tripalium network, really the idea was developing small wind in France for teaching people about wind. And we did our first course in 2008 and with um, four people that are really active, well, myself plus three others that are very active in, in Tripalium especially in the beginning. So Thomas Gross, Thomas Plassard, and Gail Caesar. And um, we put up the first wind turbine. And really the idea of Tripalium is um, creating a resource of people that know how small wind works. Um, everybody asks, you're not afraid of competition. Um, no, I want to cre create a competition because to have a healthy small wind market, we need to have lots of people that know how wind turbines work. We need to have a lot of people um, doing maintenance, selling parts, selling material. It's hard to take somebody serious if they're the only installer in the whole country for small wind. So we have to make a lot of the people that know how to do this and they're making their living from this. Also trying to reduce the price of small wind. Small wind's expensive because when you buy a, a small wind turbine from a company, they're selling you, selling you not only the small wind turbine, but also a five-year guarantee. And so when the guarantee is that you know how to repair the wind turbine yourself, we can sell the wind turbine for the price of the materials, or maybe just a little bit more to cover any unforeseen uh, accidents or problems. Also, we reduce the price because the installation cost is paid by the course participants. And this is really interesting because the manufacturer and the installations paid for that by the participants, it means that the price of the wind turbine is only the cost of the material. Also, the idea is to train what we call the pilots here. So the pilot is flying his small wind turbine, so the small wind owners, to perform the basic, the basic maintenance. The basic maintenance. So that way, most things he can do himself. If it's a big problem, um, you have a problem with the, the tail that goes into the blades. Maybe it's going to be more difficult, but I've, I've had lots of people that said, hey, uh, we had a problem with the turbine. I fixed it, and now it's up and running. It also makes it easier because instead of going to do repair work, I can stop by and check on the client when I'm in the area. And instead, what we'll do is we'll just talk a little bit about the wind turbine, or we'll do a basic checkup maintenance so I can teach him a little bit more about the small wind turbine. And he has his wind turbine running for another year or two without having to intervene to, to get involved with it. Also, the, um, the idea is really that the course participants, people who have taken the course, they can also help out their neighbor. So we try to put in con put contact with somebody that's taken the course, somebody that has a wind turbine in the area. We say, hey, well, if you want to see somebody in your area that has a turbine, Jeff, he has a wind turbine right near your place. He's 10 kilometers away. 
you go and visit them. And so a lot of times when the person would do the maintenance, they'll send out a little email inviting people to come and give them a hand. And in the exchange, they'll, they'll pay them a couple of beers and, and maybe something to eat. And it's a, a good way to do a, a project together. The people that are taking this course are passionate about small wind and, and they want to come out and help and they're happy to, to come out and give a hand. So part of this um, dynamic is, is creating resource people who have um, followed several courses. And so to encourage this, what we do is we invite people that have taken one course to come back for free for a second or third course. And slowly they become uh, wind, small wind turbine trainers. And um, most of the people, uh, about 30 people in France now that have taken the course, have participated several times in the course, are teaching people or have participated as trainers or have run courses themselves. Um, this gives us, uh, if there's a course that happens in the other side of France, I don't have to drive all the way out to Brittany. Um, somebody else can run the course there. So here's a, a chart that shows you a little bit how Tripalium works. Um, so I think we've sold in France about 4,000 manuals, um, small turbine construction books. And so we started from the first book that we translated in 2004. And with the association, a lot of the work of the association has been into improving the, maybe not the technology, but how we teach that's written and how to explain things in the manual. Um, people taking the course, oh, sorry, I forgot to part of this written in French, but we, we taught about uh, 2000 students how to build a small wind turbine. So we have about 30 people that are running courses that maybe will participate as a, the lead um, teacher or an assistant teacher in a course. And probably about 200 people that have built their small wind turbine. And so add that 200, what we call the placardists. So that's the people that have the wind turbine in their closet. So there are 50 people that have a wind turbine in their garage or in their closet that's not running because otherwise maybe they had a small problem, but usually what it is is they've just never installed the turbine. So that's one of the projects also for the association to help these people get these turbines installed. And um, Wednesday, I drove up to a, a client's place about um, four hours away from here, and we installed a wind turbine that has been sitting around for the last four years. And he was able to buy the wind turbine from the association that had built it, and um, we installed it together. And really also, we want to do a lot of support for the pilots or the owners of small wind turbines. There are about 150 of these in France um, that are all listed on the Tripalium site um, to help and make sure they can keep their wind turbine up and running. Well, one thing I've noted that I've discovered with small wind courses is about one, of a, one out of every 10 participants will build a small turbine. And that's probably not even true. It's probably one out of 20 or one out of 30. So what happens to the other one out of 10 or, oh, sorry, nine out of 10 or 19 out of 20 people? What are they there for? They're, they're not gonna build a wind turbine. What they're there is to learn about wind turbines, but also to learn about other things, about woodworking, sharpening tools, um, doing electronics, working with resin, metal work. Um, they're here to learn and also to have a good time. I mean, you, you, have, you can't take that out of it. The, a small wind turbine training course is about having fun, and that's why people are here. And so you have to make sure that the courses are fun and educational. So um, in reality, one thing that I've noticed is um, a one-week training course is, is the equivalent of a high school shop class, you know, a class where you learn how to do woodworking or metalworking. And the problem is is schools now, our high schools and our college, uh, middle schools, they don't teach people, they don't teach the students anymore how to use their hands. And so we replace that and we fill this gap of teaching people how to build things with their hands. And give them an introduction. I um, should get a commission on all of the, all of the welding machines, arc welders and, uh, and angle grinders that I've sold because people have taken a course and uh, they said, hey, when I bought a welder and so now I'm welding. And so you're building a wind turbine? No, 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 but I, I built shelves and I built a sculpture and I, I built a, a fence for a, a door or whatever else. It's, um, it's a great way for, to get people an introduction into how to build things. So in this way, also, we have to see that the wind turbine becomes a vehicle for learning. And we have to realize that the, 
the the vehicle, the wind turbine, the finished product is is important, but the learning process and learning how to do things is just as important. And we can't forget this when we're putting together a wind turbine. It's not a race to the finish to build a wind turbine. The It's running the race that's important. And one example of also using small wind for educational education is a association we've created here in France called Eolicola. And the idea is to teach students about electricity, aerodynamics, electronics, magnetism, 3D modeling and printing um, by building a small wind turbine, whether we'll build a small wind turbine where we'll put together and sculpt the blades, or we'll print it out with a 3D printer and do the windings and build a small wind turbine that we can put in front of a fan. Um, but looking at course material, where well, we build something with our hands and afterwards we test it and we can play with it. And we learn about lots of different things by doing this. Well, one thing is, um, how does this come into play with the small wind market and how to develop in small wind? Don't, in, in France, there are few off-grid sites, less and less. Uh, most small wind installations are grid-tied. Um, the price of electricity from the grid in France is very, very cheap, around 15 cents. So nobody's going to make their money at, um, back from selling energy to a grid. So what we're doing is we're selling a lot of people, the, selling the wind turbine and the person's buying the turbine because they're happy to make their proper energy because they dream about having a small wind turbine. It's a common occurrence that somebody says, I've always dreamed about having a small wind turbine and now I've got a little bit of money. I can, I can do it, do this and realize my dream. Um, around the world, this is not all, not always the case. Um, as the price of smaller panels have gone down, it's more and more difficult for wind to be the best solution. But there are lots of places where a small wind turbine makes the difference of keeping the lights on. And we have a lot of places like this site where I set up the wind turbine this week. Um, he already has six kilowatts of solar installed. And we added the wind turbine because in winter time, he still doesn't have enough electricity. And so now he has a, a two kilowatt, a 4.2 meter machine running. Um, and overnight, we spent the night there. Overnight, um, he put out two kilowatt hours. And in the morning when we woke up, the batteries are fully charged. He's got two freezers, a uh, big refrigerator, um, everything electric. Well, not the heating for the house, but most things electric. And no problem, he can cover all of his energy needs with the wind turbine that he helped built four years ago that he was able to buy from the association that had never installed it. So um, there's a potential in around the world for putting up small wind turbines to answer energy need. But the question for me is how we do financing because in France, the Tripalium model works because the cost of the materials is paid by the person buying the wind turbine. So we have half of the cost that is by the person that's buying the turbine and the small energy system and the installation and fabrication are paid for by the participants taking the course. So the question becomes is how to finance the development of small wind when there's very little or no financement by the, the people taking the course. And um, this is a question for me. I don't really know how to answer. Um, one possibility is um, the example of a project we did last November in the Republican, in the RDC, the Republican, Republic Democrat of Congo. Um, the, the installation, so everything was paid for by the AFD, the Agence Francais de Development, through a, a project to teach the teachers in technical colleges how to set up a small wind turbine. And in the beginning, the proposition was to sell them three small wind turbines and do the course around in three industrial wind turbines. And we were able to change this. And instead of selling them three industrial wind turbines, we sold them a project where they built two wind turbines. So during one month with the teachers, we built two wind turbines. And for me, the, the success of this project was measured by the fact that um, in February, the one of the teachers sent me a couple of pictures with the students of them building a third wind turbine. So they were able to build a third and install a third wind turbine after we had left. And so I think it can be a very interesting type project 
to try to develop um, small wind by working with educational technical universities, technical colleges. If we can get some financing to help pay for the people to take the course and pay for maybe teaching the teachers and getting the teachers up and running, then the um, for having the installation, maybe we can find somebody that has a little bit of money to install it at their place. I think we can find the client if the price is, is reasonable. And so the um, one possibility is government financing. For, for me though, the question also becomes having a, maybe a quartermaster or have somebody that's there that supplies materials. And that's kind of what I do here in France with uh, Tiol, with my company here is I, I supply magnets, copper wire, um, even wood, blades, um, whatever we can imagine. Um, what I saw the problem was in, in RDC in Congo and um, in other places is a lot of times, most of the material we can find locally, but there's some things we can't find and having a small company that's there. I don't know if it's possible to do that through the school. I don't think so. Having a small company that's there that can supply materials probably will, have, will be a, a requirement to doing development, development in, a, in a locally in a country. But the idea is the fabrication, the installation and the maintenance can be performed by the, the technical school. So the question now becomes where to now? But um, I think uh, maybe we'll hold off for questions to the end of the session or we have those right now. We can have a couple right now and uh, like you can take three, three, three questions, I think. And uh, we have an open dis discussion after. So keep your questions. and. Uh, then we go on with uh, the next presentation. Thank you. So we have a question from uh, Emmanuel. How do you organize the courses? Are these open courses organized for closed groups at universities? This uh, usually I do maybe two closed groups per year. So um, out of the 10 or 12 courses. So I have two courses that will be organized through a university where we'll build a wind turbine. But for the most part, these are courses that I organize with um, local partners. Um, either I organize it by myself here in Valence or I organize it with a, an association or an individual that wants to have the wind turbine. Um, probably half my courses are organized by the person that wants the turbine. And so I have somebody that contacts me and says, yeah, I'm interested in having a wind turbine. I I'm, don't really know if I can build it myself or if I want to spend all the time to build it myself because it's a lot of work. Um, so I say, hey, well, we can do a course at your place and then um, if they've got enough space, we can even work in their barn, um, stay and do the camping in their, in their yard. And um, so this works pretty well. And so we do a lot of communication. So on the, the Tripalium, the TL websites, and sometimes local communication through newspaper and radio. And then a, a second question also from Emmanuel. How do you deal, how maybe, I, I, I'll, uh, I can see that there are two other questions for other people. Uh, maybe we can uh, keep your question for after, Emmanuel, sorry. Uh, so Jean asks, uh, what's your view on solving the supply chain issue for courses to follow up in developing countries? I I think he, maybe a local partner would be a possibility. Uh, maybe somebody, if you have somebody reliable that's selling some, um, already doing, importing a little bit of material and selling some solar material, maybe it'd be possible to piggyback uh, on an existing local company. I'm kind of worried with working with um, educational schools uh, because sometimes it doesn't become the priority anymore. So where the financing gets cut off for working on small wind and then all of a sudden 
everything stops, um, especially since it's, it's on government funding. And so having maybe a local company that um, is doing a little bit of import work, working with a local company to do this um, would be a possibility. Hmm. Thank you, Jay. Uh, last question from uh, Gandhi Alva. Uh, how the teachers and students from El Congo did another wind turbine on their own? When I went to the Congo, um, what we, <laughs> we were able to do with the... Um, the money from the AFD, instead of buying, um, they had a, a nice budget because they were planning on buying three industrial wind turbines. And so instead of shipping them three industrial wind turbines, I shipped them the materials for building three uh, Piggott machines. And since I had a lot of money left over um, because the it's much cheaper than buying industrial machines, I also shipped them um, a, contain, um, a pallet of tools and material. And so they had all the material that was available for building the third machine. And even some of the material we, we sourced locally as well. So we visited with some of the teachers, the, um, the market and see what we could find locally. A lot of the things we could find, the thing that becomes more difficult are usually the, the magnets. Um, but a lot of the things we can find there, the magnets and the regulator. Mm. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> no worries. Think, yeah, no, I think uh, th there are other questions. Uh, you, you can you can use uh, everybody the Q and A uh, question and answer uh, box um, on your screen, and uh, there's a way to find them back at the end of the session, so we can open discuss uh, together after. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, okay. Who's next? <laughs> I think it's Nick. I think I think I'm next. <laughs> okay, super. All right. Hello, everybody. Um, so yeah, my name is Nick Warren, and I am one of the founders of WindAid Institute. Um, we build small wind turbines in Peru for people without electricity. Um, but the way in which we do it is very heavily focused on volunteers um, and education, especially at uh, both the local and university levels. Um, and so that's a little bit about me and WindAid and taking that into consideration. I'm going to figure out how to use a slideshow, excuse me. There we go. Um, I'm going to be talking to you all today. Is there something you could do with your microphone? I think there's uh, some... Uh, oh, uh, sure. Yeah, no. Can you try talking? Can you hear me now? Ah, oh, that's way better, thank you. Okay, great. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so, as I was saying, um, I'm Nick Warren. I'll be presenting um, what I've learned at WindAid, who builds small wind turbines in Peru for people without electricity. Um, and I'll specifically be talking about um, how practical education um, between different societal groups um, actually really facilitates um, a better education. Um, and so the order in which I'm going to talk to you guys today is specifically about um, the main groups in which uh, WindAid does its work, um, those being with rural Peruvian community members, the people um, with whom we install the wind turbine and who ultimately use that electricity, um, and then grade school students. Um, this is both within the communities and um, when we are able to create an alliance um, either in Trujillo or in rare occasion in other cities in Peru where we're not located. Um, we will do workshops and work with grade school students. Um, and then finally, we do a lot of work with university scholars, both with um, official alliances with various universities, uh, both nationally and internationally. And then also um, through our volunteer program, which um, a lot of university scholars participate in, 
as do a lot of international professionals. Um, once I've gone through each of those groups a little bit, I'll describe the, the way in which we work together specifically, um, because I think the collaboration is really the key for what we're able to offer to these, these people that they might not necessarily see in other ways. Um, and then finding how this, finally explaining how this deepens their understanding of wind energy and sustainability. Um, so hands-on interactive educational opportunities. Um, Wind Aid puts a lot of emphasis on making sure that anybody who wants to be is involved in our work. Um, this is everything from the kids tightening bolts on actual wind turbines that will ultimately give them electricity um, to uh, international professionals on wind energy that weren't able to understand the impacts that their work might have been creating if they're working at a large organization. Um, so to focus on the rural community members and how we develop our interaction with them, um, because their interactions often are sometimes negative or limited in working with um, international groups, we always start with a very low key just greeting in the community to better understand uh, their needs, to express what kind of opportunities might exist with wind aid. Um, and then assuming that goes well, uh, we then grow upon that basically seed of the communication and potential for a project, um, whereby designing a project specifically to fit their needs, where they are able to give us feedback. Um, based on that feedback, in the longer term, we've also changed the designs of our wind turbines to better fit what communities tend to need. Um, and then even beyond that, we always make special attention that community members are trained in and understand the wind turbines and wind turbine systems um, so that they are able to manage them themselves. Uh, grade school students. Uh, so within the community, whenever we go to a community, we always try to focus on doing work with the kids. Um, that could be doing a presentation about climate change. That could be building the little wind turbine kits that you see in this picture. It, it could be any number of things, but we always make sure to work with the kids. Um, and what we have found over time is a little bit less lecture and a lot more workshop um, it is a lot more productive with kids. Letting them run around and be creative is um, <laughs> it, Awesome. Um, they do things that you wouldn't dream of, and it's really inspiring. Um, actually, there's a kid that we did a recycle project with um, in his community where it had nothing to do with wind energy, didn't even have to do with energy. Um, but he had seen some wind turbines go up around town, and after the recycle project, uh, we went back at a later date and saw on the corner of his house that he had carved up an old uh, plastic bottle and it had three blades sticking out of it and it was pinned to a stick of wood so that it would spin around when it was windy. And I just thought that was cool. Um, at that time, he did not have wind electricity in his house. Um, however, when we installed it, we made a special point to include him in, I think he tightened the bolts on the base as much as he could, I think he was 10 years old. But so that was really cool seeing that inspiration in him. And it also spoke a lot to us refocusing on our, our efforts on making sure that um, our energies were interactive and really give the kids an opportunity to um, show what they were capable of and be creative. Uh, now, as those kids grow up, a lot of them become university scholars, not all of them. However, um, I, I'm focused specifically on a college colegio, uh, secondary school, in Trujillo, where we did a lot of work with their science program, um, specifically doing their science project, where one of the students actually went on to become a sustainability engineer because of his work with Wind Aid, um, which I thought was just wicked cool. Um, and we ended up working with him a little bit while he was at university. But what he found with Wind Aid before university, which we have been able to offer to university students from around the world is that 
there's a lot of opportunity for practical education and some universities don't, they don't miss out on doing this, but there's not an emphasis on it. Um, and so a lot of people come to Wind Day because they've learned a lot of theory of wind energy or even theory of materials or chemicals or what have you. And by coming to Wind Day, they're able to deepen their understanding of what those theories have in application. Um, and even beyond that, those who are able to stay a little bit longer are able to deepen their interaction with both professionals and with communities and thereby design some part of the wind turbine or wind energy system um, and, and really kind of digging in and creating an iterative model is great for wind aid, it's great for the communities, but it's really exceptional for um, any growing professional who's able to do that, uh, get that hand-on experience, but also create that impact is amazing. And then finally, um, the last large group we work with uh, in that sense is international professionals um, who, who come to Wind Aid for a variety of reasons. Um, some of them just want to break. Um, a lot of them work in the wind energy field or even sustainability, um, but are a cog in a much larger organization and have kind of gotten distant from understanding what the actual impact is of their work. And so when they come down to Wind Aid, they're able to get that hands-on understanding. They're able to go out to those communities um, and they're able to understand if they were to be designing, oh, shall we say, uh, electronics, um, they'd actually be able to see that controller installed, converting electricity from the wind turbine and actually lighting up lights in somebody's house that didn't have it before. And that impact is incredible. Um, and the same kind of thing can be inspiring for professionals who hit a dead end, don't really know where to go. Um, they come down here to kind of hit the reset button and see where they want to go with it. Um, and then finally, it's a phenomenal uh, opportunity to network and see what other um, technologies are happening around your field. Um, so to go a little bit deeper into the kind of collaborative environment that we create at WindAid, um, we specifically emphasize that everybody has to get hands on um, and it's done together. Um, while of course you might wind a coil yourself if that's what the job requires, uh, the process of building an entire wind turbine and then installing that entire wind turbine, it necessitates teamwork. Um, and we make it a point that those teams, uh, whenever possible, are broad. Um, you very well might get somebody from Trinidad and Tobago working with somebody else from Brunei, um, or you might get a student from a local university uh, working with a community member who never finished secondary school. And those kind of overlaps um, not only create an appreciation for the electricity, which was Wind Aid's kind of budding force, but it also creates um, aspirational goals. It, it makes you understand that your fellow man is capable of things and to put it painfully bluntly i'd like to believe that it helps lessen racism to some extent or at least classism uh, depending on where you come from and who you end up working with and while those aren't the overarching goals of winded i think it's really important that when working hands-on in a team as those people work together and depend on their partners you grow an appreciation for somebody in a way that you simply couldn't have had in another way. Um, rolling back um, from, I guess, some of the altruistic uh, aspirations that I have within Wind Aid um, is the goal of the organization as a whole, and that is expanding the understanding of wind energy and sustainability via creating um, electricity where it didn't exist before. And while this is very inspirational, um, it, it is also very educational uh, because you are directly involved in creating that and it gives you a deeper appreciation for what that kind of work is, which helps deepen your understanding of everything you've just learned. Beyond simply uh, creating renewable energy where there wasn't electricity before, Wind Aid also emphasizes um, going around and pointing out places within Peru where climate change has devastated um, local populations 
Um, and we do that not necessarily to be a downer to our participants, be those community members or uh, volunteers um, or even students to some extent, um, but we do that so that there is a deeper understanding of why the renewable part of wind energy is so important. And so that people, when they're down here to learn about wind energy, also grow an understanding and appreciation for the need of sustainability. Um, and then finally, uh, the effects that these people, these members, these volunteers, everybody who comes through WindAid um, notice are both on the micro and macro level. Um, and this is benefited by the fact that all of our work, not all of it, but the vast majority of our hands-on work is done at the micro level. It's done with wind turbines that, the, our largest wind turbine that we build in shop is 2,500 watts. So very small wind turbines, um, but that have a dramatic effect when it's installed for somebody that didn't have electricity. And yet doing that work with an international team and an understanding of that greater technology effect around the world um, can be very inspiring for somebody who might have felt a little bit caught in the bounds of their community, whatever that community might be. Um, and so that's some of the understanding that we, we create within the micro and macro level at Windy. And then if I could leave you all with anything, it would be a lot of big world words shoved together. Um, no, it's basically that practical education is extraordinarily useful at an individual level. Um, but what we have found is that doing it in a, such a way that we are crossing societies and we are crossing classes and we are making people interact that might not have been able to do so otherwise um, really deepens the understanding of um, wind energy, but it also deepens an appreciation for what um, people are capable of that you otherwise might not have thought of or at worst might not have respected. Um, and yeah, that is my presentation. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'd be happy to entertain some questions if you like. Thanks. Thanks, Nick. Uh, amazing photo, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. I That, that is not my photo. Um, I stole that from... <laughs> Martin, who's a former volunteer, although if I got it wrong, I'm sorry. Okay, so everyone feel free to ask some questions to Nick or uh, keep them uh, for the end. I think people is uh, surprised and paralyzed by the photo. <laughs> really good photo. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Nick. Very, very interesting. Really interesting. Great. Um, in that case, I'll wait for questions at the end if folks want to throw them out at me, and I'll pass the buck on to the next presenter. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Mm, Karana, do you want to follow on? I'm not sure who the next presenter was, actually. That's me, then, I guess. Okay. We barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Karana, and uh, I am. Uh, I'm a US citizen, but I'm, I've been living in Africa for about 20 years. And um, um, I always like to start off with these pictures. They show you kind of the, the, the very diverse kind of work that I do. I work with uh, small wind, windmills, small wind turbines, um, but I work with all ages as well. This is not what I do for a profession. Uh, I do this as um, a way of giving back. I am a conflict mediation expert, um, but my um, my wind turbine TV, if you will,
Corona. Well, I think uh, we lost you, Karana. Yeah, I think we lost him. Are you I'll still there? I'll send him an email. Let's see. Maybe we can use this time to to take a, a coffee, to go to the bathroom, too. I guess uh, most of us continue chatting during this core meeting, so <laughs> we will see what's happened with Hello. 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 I'm back? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Sure. Ah, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> from the country. I'm sorry, the I am not in Abidjan, the capital. I am in up country in a, on the border with Mali. So I'm in a very not very good internet location, I guess. Okay. Uh, but I was able to follow with great interest the presentations um, so far with Jay and uh, with Nick. Very interesting. So I I'm hoping you can hear me okay and I'll I'll just keep moving forward. And if I get cut off, I'm very sorry. Um, so I was just saying earlier that I have a, a, a very diverse background, mostly in conflict mediation. That's my main work. But um, Small Win came to me via a, work, a workshop with uh, Dan Bartman in Colorado. And you can see here with it doing a 12, uh, 12 foot machine. And uh, what I do now is I build, uh, I organize workshops. Um, it's a build a turbine in a, in a day workshop. It's an educational tool but also for entrepreneurial purposes to help people become more familiar with it. And I, I, oh, how do I advance now? Let's see. Oh, I see. So a few, there's a few reasons why I'm working in this area in the first place. Um, one of them is that I realized that there's a couple of realities that are, um, that I encountered after my, my training with, with Dan. And the first one is that wind energy is a mystery to way too many people. Uh, it's, there's so many misconceptions about what it, what energy is, what it's supposed to do, and how complex it uh, it is. Um, the second reality that drove me in this direction is that the most popular models, uh, like the the Piggott axial models, are really inaccessible financially to most of the world's population. And then the third reality was that most wind turbine classes that I've attended or I've seen available online or elsewhere. They teach to a standard that is not adapted to energy consumption. <clears throat> sorry, to energy consumption levels in most for most people in the world. Um, in most of West Africa and a great part of Central Africa, um, and some parts of East Africa, but I know the main parts of South America as well. Car batteries are how you power your your appliances in your village, um, and so we're not talking about kilowatts unless you're talking about many batteries brought together, you're sometimes talking about just the ability to charge a single 12 volt battery. Um, I also was inspired because of my work as an international in international development and peacekeeping that there are sustainable development goals. One of them is the main to ensure that everyone has access to affordable and reliable and sustainable modern energy for all. And so for me, wind energy was the perfect fit for this. And so through the organization that I created, which is called KOC Bridges to Peace, I started working on figuring out how to help people design machines that are at the intersection between what means they have and what needs they have. And the means are very, very meager. I'm working with populations who make less than a dollar a day, but I don't want that to be an inhibitor to them to being able to produce energy on their own. So what we generally do is we have them present a problem. Uh, what is the pro problem in the sense of what, do you, what are your power needs? And based on their presentation of what their power needs, 
we have them, we start presenting to them a number of tools. Now I work with populations that have no, no ability to read or write, but I also work with students who are engineer students, uh, engineering professors. So there's a whole gamut. So you need to keep everyone interested in the workshops that, you, that I hold to make sure that everyone stays involved and they help each other. So we start with Ohm's law. We look at the, you know, the, whole, the whole relationship between voltage and amperage, and then basic concepts. How is power being produced? And then from that, we also look at wind as a source of energy and, and, and how that works and how do you measure it. And we also try to make, try to make it fun if we can. But also we, we try to make sure that people understand that there are different dynamics between different parts of the world. If you're in a cooler area, like I saw in Peru up in the mountains, you're gonna have a very different kind of dynamics going on. So it makes it interesting for everyone because the students uh, who attend my classes, uh, the engineering students want to see the math that they've learned or the engineering that they've learned in school but never saw any, any practical applications. Um, Jay mentioned earlier about the lack of ability for hands-on work and Nick mentioned something similar about the institutions need, need to be more involved. And I can say that in Cote d'Ivoire here, the professors are afraid to attend my classes because they think that they're afraid to show that they have no practical experience. And so these classes um, are full of students uh, who have uh, either majored in electronics or engineering or uh, other, uh, other related um, uh, fields, but they have never had hands on it at all. Uh, some of them have graduated graduate school without touching a single machine. So uh, what we do is we had fun with them. We, we teach them about some of the basic dynamics and what can happen, what can happen, what are the expectations you should have with wind energy? Uh, what are the, some of the down, down spouts? What are the, how, do, how, do you main, how do you manage um, expectations as well? Uh, this is just a simple um, just demonstration of how you have uh, a loss of energy. And also we try to explain what are the best place to put these machines, because the idea is that we don't just want people to learn about them. We want them to test them and we want them to succeed. One of the main reasons why I even get involved in wind power is because solar power, power even though the prices are dropping, they're way beyond the cost of an average person. Um, they're here in Cote d'Ivoire, you have to pen, spend $350 for a wind, wind, uh, a wind uh, system, not a wind system, sorry, a solar system. Uh, you can pay an installment of $10 a month over three years. That's still a lot of money for someone who makes less than a dollar a day. And it's an investment that over three years, uh, when the components start breaking down and they, and they can't repair them, uh, they, they're not able to make that kind of uh, adjustment. They, they don't learn how to install a solar system. They simply buy one. And so the idea of learning how to build them on their own gives them another kind of solution. So the solutions I'm trying to help uh, provide through the educational models I have is that they learn where materials can come from. Now, now the, use of, the use of hard drive batteries, uh, a hard drive rather to get the uh, magnets is something that I've seen uh, played around with on YouTube. People kind of um, uh, shun it because it's the, the, bat, the magnets themselves are not really strong, that strong, but they're str more than strong enough to produce a 100 watt unit, which is what we produce here. 80 to 100 watt units, and the, uh, they're very cheap. You can buy them for about a dollar for two of them. But the other interesting thing about the access, I mean, we can, we've also tell them where they can access coils, uh, wiring from uh, broken down um, transformers, for example. Uh, Cotivar is one of the largest dump sites for electronic wastes. So a lot of people send, a lot of well-meaning people send computers that are, uh, you know, they're definitely not the most recent ones. Some of them don't even work on Windows. Uh, and when they arrive here, they go straight to the dump. And some very industrious people go there and take them, take them up and store them, hoping that they can make a profit from the components within. They'll strip them down, including making a nice, uh, nice wind, not winded coils, but uh, they'll, they'll wind the wire around a large um, bobbin that I could use and I could buy from them. So all the materials we use for our, our, our windmills come from 100% recycled materials. Everything comes from the city dump which means that you can build a windmill here for about 10 to $12 for an 80 to 100 watt machine. The other components, I tell them you can get them by, you can borrow a, 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 a saw from someone, you can borrow a wrench from someone, you can borrow, you can buy um, glue for about 20 cents. So that these are all very accessible. The idea is accessibility above all. And so the end products are, is that we, we have people who are able to work on and build these things 
um, sometimes using completely free materials. My first, my first workshop was an impromptu thing that I put together. I was in Casamance in Southern uh, Senegal. And this team came together and they threw together. They found the, they found all the components they needed. The, this is the, I, I usually prefer working with um, wood blades, but this is with a PVC pipe that they found near a construction site. Uh, everything else was donated or found. So we didn't have to pay for these parts. Um, you can get a better sense of how it looks when it's actually spinning in the wind. It's very rickety. This one, I think this unit lasted six months. Now it's very rickety. It produced about 20 watts, which was more than enough for them to light up the light bulbs that they used in their in their workshop. This man here you see uh, is um, a carpenter. And so you can see the things he builds right in front of you. And this light up the lights in his workshop. So he can work in the workshop at night, much to the dismay of his wife, because I think he uses the workshop to get away from his wife at night. <laughs> anyway, this gives you an idea of what kind of things they're producing. Um, oops, let me get on to the next slide. The kind of uh, the kind of tools we give people in the workshops are are broken down to help them be able to reproduce this at home. Very simple, uh, demonstrative um, designs of how they can use this are all based on the the picket models. So there's there are axial models, but they're using a lot of wood. Uh, I either had them uh, carve the blades. I have them look at what do you want to produce in, in terms of power. So they have the power uh, equations, they, and they know uh, if they calculate for R, they'll know approximately how much power they owe to, to harness from the wind. So we give them the tools, we give them the questions, we let them explore, and we let them build. We let them decide whether they want to build a, a two-phase or a three-phase model. Uh, again, experimenting with what they're going to build helps them to, to decide what they need and how much money they have. Each coil is weighed in part to make sure we're comparing the coils, make sure they have the same level of output, but also to let them know, okay, one coil weighs uh, 53 grams, which, and you have to pay eight, uh, eight francs per gram. So now you know, if you wanna build a 100 watt machine, you wanna build a 500 watt machine, you know the weight, you know how much it will cost, and you know how much you can afford. And so, Again, the emphasis on means versus need. If you want, if your needs are to build something more powerful, look and see what your means are. If your means aren't there, then stick with what you have. And then this encourages the youth and our, our workshops to go out and explore. I know there's a, that ratio that Jay mentioned about the one to 30 people actually going out and, and, and flying their units. Well, these, these students have a similar problem with uh, the uh, level of confidence to go out and actually implement this. So what we try to do is we try to encourage them to explore. Uh, I provide them with all this background material. Um, oops, am I losing you guys? So here, here's an example uh, of what the workshop would look like. As I said, we work with a lot with wood. Uh, we don't use metal as supports except for, for the rotor because the rotor needs to have a good backing for the, the magnets. But uh, basically they're brought together and in one day they will put together one to four machines. Uh, usually the workshops have about 30 to 40 people. They cost, these, each workshop cost me $20 to organize. So I don't have to put out a lot of money. Um, and no one pays to attend, no one pays to build. Um, and all the units remain with me. They don't go home with, with them because I, I, I need them to, re, to revamp and to, and to re, reuse them. At the end of the day, we go to the rooftop and we explore that we show them how the wind can actually light. Um, and then that, that's pretty much how we, we conduct our work at the end of the day once they've seen that they can actually produce something with wind. That's pretty much what I wanted to share with you today. Um, it's, been, um, it's been three years now since I've started doing this. I'm, I'm doing them every other month. And it's been, um, I've been trying to find funding to make sure that I can do this on a, on a wider scale with, with, uh, with more materials. But, Finding magnets here has not been a big problem. I found very, very strong magnets that are based on um, uh, units that were used to sift through cocoa, uh, cocoa beans. Cocoa beans, when they're harvested, are go have to be sifted and make sure there are no ferric material from the soil. And so they use very strong magnets underneath the conveyor belts. And I've been using these um, in, my, in, my, um, in my windmills, the ones that I built for myself. Those, those units are 500. 500 watts and above, they're much stronger. I don't use it with my students because I'm afraid of, of injury.
but uh, this gives you an overall idea. I didn't want to spend too much longer. I promise it would be down to 10 minutes and I think I've just hit my mark. Wow, thank you, Karana. That was uh, really, really interesting doing with this 100% recycled uh, material. Means VS versus needs. <laughs> this is what we get from this presentation. Many thanks. Um, you can ask questions to, to Karana on the Q&A or keep them for the end. This is up to you. We have a first question, I think. Do you have any electronics problem from Jean? Um, well, yes. Um, one of the biggest electronic problems is finding a reliable charger um, or regulator for the um, for the units, because every every student has a different need, they their designing uh, their designs are a little bit different. So there's no one design, so it's it's going to vary. And so we need to have a figure out how we're going to design and build our own regulators. We can't simply go on Amazon and, and import one. Uh, I want to mm. keep things available, um, accessible, so financially accessible, and uh -huh. bringing things in by mail. The mail here is not reliable, so we have to build everything from scratch. We we do build regulators, charge charger regular, uh, battery um, charging regulators, from locally available parts, usually recycled from um, discarded computers and uh, radios and others that have capacitors and resistors and all the components we need to build them. Uh, but we're still looking for a, a one that will enable us to maintain a load. Um, so when, when the batteries are charged, we don't have a free turning um, uh, turbine. That's one of the biggest uh, challenges. We haven't found just the right mix yet to make that happen. So right now, uh, when they're charged their batteries and the battery is full, they're, you know, they, most of the students who use, most of the, uh, the people who end up building them, use them just to make money charging batteries in their villages. And so they, they tend to be right next to the windmill. So it's, it's not a problem disconnecting it when it's full. They have also put on, a, they usually put on a small light bulb that lights up when it's um, full. And so that's, that's their means of figuring out whether it's the right, um, whether the charge is there or not. Because often they don't, they don't have voltmeters to measure the actual uh, charge. So we've tried potential meters uh, and other kind of components in the unit, but I'm having some difficulty. So I'm always looking for good ideas. Thank you. Another question from uh, Alfie. Uh, Karana, a really interesting presentation. I'm wondering about your point on upcycled uh, materials. What is the hardest thing to get hold of? I know from projects in Mongolia that good wood for the blade is the hardest thing to get hold of there. Well, we're lucky here because people tend to um, use wood to build. Uh, uh, all, the, all the buildings here are made from cement. And they use wood to hold up the different structures before they're before they're finally cured, and they use uh, teak wood, which is way too hard to carve. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes they have other forms of wood which are more porous and a little lighter to use, and I carve them because the wood is all free. Uh, you know, it's it's okay to to carve it. Now the question is, how do we harden it? We don't have access to linseed oil here. I tried uh, uh, grinding down actual linseed and trying to produce my own oil, but I think you produce about like <laughs> half an ounce for like a, ten, a bucket full of linseed. So it's not, it's not really worth your time. Uh, so what we do instead is that we use uh, Lipton tea. I kid you not, we use Lipton tea. We make a large Lipton tea bath and we dip the Lipton, the lip, we dip the, the blades in Lipton tea. It has a lot of tannin and it stabilizes the wood. And then after that, we use um, a little bit of turmeric in order to, to seal off and, uh, and also help stabilize the wood. And then finally, we use um, shoe polish uh, as a finish. So all the, uh, the goal of all these units are it's cheap. Wood is cheap and replaceable, but also 
uh, stabilizing the wood and protecting the wood from the elements it needs to also to be cheap. So we're, we're always keeping the, the cost low. And so shoe polish uh, so far has seemed to be a nice finish. We also try using coconut oil, which is also great to use if you, if you buff it properly. Incredible. Thank you. Um, a last question maybe from uh, Emmanuel. Uh, how many turbines are up and running in the field and for how long do they last usually? Yeah. That's a great question. So the only one that has been up and running so far uh, that has been running for a while has been up, I guess, for about a year now. But a good gust of wind knocked it over. So the biggest problem was how it was supported. Uh, it was uh, located on someone's rooftop. And so they did not have guide wires. They just had a large wide base and they held it down with um, uh, bags of sand uh, the, at the base, but uh, it was not properly screwed in. So it, it, it dropped and the blades went shattering and so did everything. And the whole unit is gone. Um, but um, there's been two others that have been up and running, but they've been taken down pretty, or pretty quickly because of improper use of, uh, the, of the, yawing, the yawing system. They, they were not properly yawing, so they um, took them down and we have to experiment a little bit more with a way to protect the, uh, the protect them when we have really strong wind. We have very strong tropical winds here. And so we need to find a good system to make sure that they yaw properly and that they keep out of the wind when it gets too, too rough. So right now we only have three units up and flying. And I said, okay. by, by we, this is not me, this is the people People who have taken my class and have gone off to do them. I don't, I don't, I don't, set, we don't, I'm not in the business of selling. I'm just in the business of educating and then people go off and do their thing. But we do mm -hmm. have a WhatsApp group, WhatsApp group where people can ask questions when something is not working and we give guidance. And that's, and that's pretty much how we work. It's mutual guidance between people who've been the, who have been in the class and mm -hmm. those who are actually trying and, and using it in the field. Collective education and troubleshooting. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Okay. Well, many, many things are uh, interesting in, in there. Um, many thanks, Karana, for your, uh, <laughs> for your participation. And uh, yeah, and <laughs> there's so much to tell, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we, we are lucky to, to get in touch through this conference. And uh, I'm sure this is not uh, the last of the, our surprises. Uh, uh, Lipton tea for uh, <laughs> for blade, <laughs> extraordinary. Um, shall we go on uh, with the um, small wind turbine online courses, Manuel? Yes, of course. Well, uh, thank you, Adrian, and uh, nice to to hear you, Jay, Nick, and uh, and Karana. Really, really interesting. Uh, so, well, I'm going to present, I have two presentations to show, very short, let's see. Okay, you can see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I would like to start uh, presenting the the NGO I work with. It, it is called uh, 500 RPM, uh, and it is it has a a project similar to 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 Jay's project in Chile. So the idea of the of the NGO is to teach about uh, wind turbines technologies and also to have a, an impact in different communities around Latin America, particularly in Argentina. Uh, so the, the main idea is the same from uh, what we are uh, listening before. And uh, well, we are doing this since, we have been doing this since uh, 2010. And uh, after a few years, we managed to work with different uh, universities, schools, communities, teaching how to build, teaching about the technology, teaching about the theory, making uh, new, new developments. But uh, particularly, if we talk about education, 
we we start to think about uh, online education to to make or to have more time with the with the people during the the courses so they can learn not also about the the construction of the turbine but also about the the theoric back of the of the construction so so well we start to to build a, a new tool uh, called uh, campus uh, that uh, help us to uh, have more time with uh, our students and to transfer more concepts so well i want to show you how it look, look like and uh, what result we, uh, we have uh, because maybe it could be interesting and useful for our organization and also to know about other projects in the same line uh, that uh, that able us to uh, make courses not just in one uh, in one community but uh, in more uh, in bigger spaces so i will show you my screen with the platform let's see Here it goes. Okay. Well, I think it could be interesting for uh, for all organizations and also for wind empowerment, maybe to think about uh, online courses and online tools. So, well, the idea is to have a, a specific uh, website that uh, allows the students to log in and uh, found the, the material that uh, you want to show during the, the courses. They have to log in like this. The, the tool is called, it's very known, it is called Moodle. Uh, it's a, an educational tool uh, very use, very used in uh, universities. So we take this uh, tool and we start to build different courses, uh, particularly focus on the uh, small wind turbine uh, projects. So then you can find here different units and different contents related to to more, uh, for example, more. Uh, lectures, more materials to read, some videos to facilitate the explication of the or, or the understanding of the contents. Uh, so, in fact, it's a place where you can also uh, give, for example, activities to to motivate them to practice with the with the numbers, to practice with the concepts. So the idea is to use it like a, a complement of the online activity of the present activities so well uh, we did it we start to use it this year uh, with the with the new wall <laughs> with the virus so we have a good results maybe we are trying to to have 50 students per course and uh, it uh, it allows us to to work with more people. Then they participate in a presential version of the courses, so they can see the 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 hands uh, faces of the knowledge. So well, that's the main idea. Maybe you can you know you know this uh, platform. It's called Moodle. So you can easily you can uh, put there what you want to to show to the to your students. You can put it on uh, different units. For example, introduction to the uh, 
wind turbine technologies and, and to the wind energy. And they have the possibility of the see specific links to order the information, to structure a course. So I guess uh, it could be interesting to, to, to some of us, some of us. And, uh, and uh, I repeat, it's for the moment, it's, uh, it's it shows like a useful tool. We will see next year when we when we go back to the reality or to the normally, because uh, this year, of course, uh, all the online tools are useful. We will see how it goes next year. I hope we we can, can continue doing the presential learning courses, so so we can how we can test how it goes with the mix of them. So well, the objective, the main objective is was to share the the tool, was to share the the, the idea of, of the complement, and uh, to tell you that it's a, a good option to to have more time with uh, with student to have uh, a, a larger courses uh, that uh, I, I could allow you to to teach more content. That's the main uh, idea of the of that tool. That, that tool. So well, I invite you to see it, and I invite you to then keep in contact to to try to to make a more more courses like that, and also why not to propose a wind empowerment to to make maybe something like this. That's uh, all for my size. Thank you, Manuel. A lot of people are writing. Hey, hey, hey. Adrian, Adrian, before I finish, I would like to know if uh, if you are using if you are using different platform, so so it can be a, a, a good way to to know uh, from other tools and to make it better. So so please let me know. Maybe then we can talk by the Discord. Let me know if you if you if somebody is uh, using different tools. Okay. People are very uh, enthusiastic about this uh, manual. <laughs> um, yeah, do you have any questions? You can ask them on the Q&A as usual. Yeah. Or we can uh, follow on with uh, Damien. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Uh, okay, uh, let me share the screen. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Damian, Damian Planes. Uh, I'm from Argentina. I'm a partner from Manuel. And I work with him uh, teaching the courses. Um, okay, uh, I work as a teacher and I do research and development of certain of wind technology. Uh, I am a high school teacher on, on a technical school here in Argentina uh, on the career of a renewable energy technician. And um, I do installations of uh, renewable energy systems. 
I am coordinator of the maintenance group of wind empowerment, but uh, I am in the, in, at this particular point, I'm presenting a project that we've been working for a few years ago with 500 RPMs. Uh, this project uh, it's based on a micro pivot for fund and education I post. Uh, it's uh, mainly for reach more people uh, with uh, less resources. Yes, uh, it's a wind turbine that can be assembly for 14 to 18 years old kids. It can be assembly for everyone, but we oriented to to secondary school. Okay, we've been searching for, we had these problems uh, to solve. Uh, for most, most of students, uh, it's very difficult to get in contact uh, with uh, turbines. Uh, when they are in big cities, they don't have uh, the possibility of see the, uh, the working turbines because there is no wind, there is, the, the big cities don't have the, the chance to to get them in contact with the turbines. There is uh, also limited amount of educational institute, institutions who can afford a uh, real turbine because as Karana said before, it's very expensive to, view, to build a, a big turbine for most of people. Also for educational meanings, uh, the, the big turbines are already designed, they, the parameters are, are fixed. So changing the parameters in a real turbine can be difficult and dangerous even if it's not correctly done. So for the education, we need something that uh, you can experiment without having risks, uh, without paying a lot for it. Uh, just this year, uh, in pandemic times, there is no way to to see the, the to make the, the students go to the schools to to get in touch with the turbines. And also, there are remote places uh, in Argentina. We have very long distance because uh, the people who uses the turbines who need the training maybe can live two thousand kilometers from the cities. And all the the people, the teachers, like I'm, uh, I am like I am, are in the big the big cities, uh, thousands of kilometers away. So we needed something to take the which we can send to those places, so the people can assemble a turbine on their own with uh, minimal explications, with a manual or the virtual platform that Manuel presented before. So, we started uh, like three years ago to design a, a small pivot, a micro pivot, uh, with simple materials, with wooden blades, uh, laser cut wood, and uh, plastic piping. So we started with uh, prototypes. We made a presentation in a school. We built a lot of turbines of this type. Uh, like in one day, we built three, uh, like 50 turbines of the of these ones, and made them turn with the uh, huge fans in the in the school like an experiment. The result was very good. So we started working with Alex and Amelie uh, that are volunteers from France that came to Argentina and they started to develop the alternator and the turbine. And they gather a lot of information about it working. So during the pandemic, I started to to see how, co how could I get to make this turbine to work and to produce power and make and sp uh, spread it all over the country. So the main idea was to uh, get this turbine that could be built uh, 
from a kit with uh, minimum tools, like uh, a set of pliers, uh, a cutter, uh, a few screwdrivers and glue. The tur this turbine, it's, it's made exactly like the pivot. It has an actual flux turbine, a uh, new dimmium magnet, and laser cut pads for all the turbine. The blades are made for balsa blue, uh, laser cut. So we sent the kit uh, already made with, the, with all these parts uh, to handle. And the main issue of this turbine is to that we can change all the parameters, the design parameters of the turbine. We can change the the, the, the pitch. So the, let's see the turbine itself. Um, there is a, a ball bearings that are taken from the spinner, the toy spinner. And so they are very cheap and they are more than enough to run the turbine. Uh, we, a simple, bolt it's for the for the axle uh, the blood and the blood the wooden blades are assembly with a uh, cyanocrylate as a simple glue and uh, we got this structure that it's very very strong uh, i tested on my house on the roof with winds at, at about 10 meter per second and the blade works fine until like two, 1,200 RPMs. And I got like 500 milliamps to charge, to fully charge a power bank that after I use it to charge my phone, for example. It's made, the coiling, the, the stator, it's made to, to charge like LIPO, the lithium polymer batteries. 3.7 volts and 2,000 milliamps. And the, we're going again to the main issue that it's a two, we can vary the, the different aspect, aspects of the turbine. We can put washers in the axle so we can change the gap on the stator and the rotor so we can change the the, the working of the alternator. We can change this, the blade pitch using these bolts. Uh, so we can put uh, the, the, the pitch we want and we can change the load of, of the turbine of the alternator by changing some resistance to give a fixed uh, resistance to the, to the alternator or we can change this battery in the electronic box to after it, after it, we can use this power to change a phone. Or we also call, call a plug a, a phone by, via USB and charge it directly from the turbine with a current regulator. So this turbine works almost like a real one, but it's very cheap, very small, and we can send this kit to lots of places away from the cities. Uh, the, the kids or anyone who wants to build it can build it at home. And for that, we the, here's the electronic box. For that, we made a, a very complete manual. So we can, with this manual, we can, they, if we follow step by step, uh, we can build the turbine very easily. Uh, here is a description of the electronic box with the schematics. It's very simple, so the kids uh, should not have no problem to make it. The manual, the manual is uh, like 80 pages. I wrote it in the pandemic, during the pandemic, and has uh, like 3D pictures of all the process of construction from the turbine. And uh, also, uh, with, there's another manual with exercises, uh, theoretical knowledge and basis to, so the people who build the turbine, after the turbine is built, they can make these exercises to get pedagogical experience uh, on the turbine, on the work, and the, the theory of, of the functioning of the turbine. And, uh, 
get a, like a full experience of building the turbine, learning how it works, and uh, learning, seeing, seeing in the turbine how any change in the pitch or in the efficiency of the alternator can affect the working of the turbine. And if they missed because they put too much uh, pitch on the blade or they put too far the alternator, uh, it's not like a, a bad, it's not so bad uh, as making it in a big turbine. So they can experience without problem, without risk with this turbine. And once they finish the, all the activities, they have uh, this like toy that can can be used to load to charge phones, tablets, uh, power banks, and if this kit was sent to a remote location where they don't have electricity, they may use this turbine to change the phone to keep learning. So it's like a very integral experience. This is how the kit uh, looks. Uh, it's laser cut parts. Uh, the blades are made like uh, airplane model wings, so it's very simple to build. Uh, I started to build this kind of airplanes when I have eight years old. So any kid from at least 10 to 12 years old get to build this, these blades. They are very strong, they, they work until 1,200 RPMs without problems. And uh, this old kit, uh, it's very simple to use and to manage. There is no complex uh, parts or anything. So what the, sorry, I went uh, one more. Uh, what are we planning to do with this toy? Uh, the next, we are we already have four prototypes to test by beta testers, and one prototype working to which we may, we use to make them the the statistics of the turbine, and the next step will be to make the three D printed parts, so we can enhance a lot the working of the turbine, make it uh, more reliable. Uh, and can be printed in any school. In Argentina, all the technical schools have 3D printers, so we can send the model and the manual to the schools, and in the school, they can print the turbine, the parts, and build the rest of the parts that can be printed uh, at uh, local shops. Um, there is a... When you have a nice product, you can get more easily to be booked for 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 enterprises and anyone who wants to share to collaborate with the with the project so if we send a nicer turbine it's more be less difficult to get the fundings for implement this kind of projects and well it's, it's a way to to take the this technology to any place uh, and use it very simple. I have some videos of the turbine working. This is so. This is here is spinning very, very, very slow. But I tested again at day that day at night, and I got this the working. I don't know if you hear the audio. Okay. It's very windy. Yeah, that day was like eight uh, meter per second way a day, and the turbine reached like nine hundred RPMs, but it went faster and with no problem, no, no structural problems. Uh, in this video, uh, the the turbine is tied to a table, and a very strong gust made this table to work like one meter uh, back. So we, you have to fasten very tight the, the turbine so it will not, so it don't, doesn't blow away. 
So, okay, uh, that was the, the idea of the project. This is what, one of the, the issues, the, the subjects I've been working this year. And uh, well, there is a lot to do, but I think the value for this turbine is about uh, $150, uh, but it's because we, we put um, works for uh, drilling holes and preparing pieces. Once we can print the pieces on 3D, the price will be very much the uh, down than that, uh, very lower, lower cost than that. So if you have any question, please, it uh, will be great to us to answer. I see the question from Ram Pers. Uh, how is the RPM measuring being done? We measure the frequency of the alternator and made a calculation uh, for a three phase, it's a three phase uh, alternator. So we make the conversion and they take the RPMs from the frequency of the, the alternator. Uh, Chin about the wobble on the axis. Uh, we, I have just found a bolt that fit exactly on the spinner bearings. So uh, it doesn't move, doesn't, don't, don't have any problem. It works perfect. Uh, you can see in the presentation, I will change the, the slide, the, the exact uh, structure of the, of the head, of the hub. You have the, the bearings. These are wood pieces, uh, cylindrical. And this is the bolt that goes to the propeller. So here is the rotor with the magnet. Here are the stator with the coils. And there is a spacer here that prevents the rotor to hit the magnet. So it's very simple. It's a bolt with washers and a spacer. And Jonathan. I used a Fusion 360 from Autodesk. Uh, Jean, the plans are not online yet because it's not the, the final version yet done, but uh, it will, they will be uh, at some point. So it is open source? I think, yes, uh, I am making all the design, uh, but it, it will be open source, yes, yes. Uh, it will be published um, when I had the final version. Uh, we have these four prototypes to be sent to beta testers, so they will be give me my, the feedback from the, from the building, and after that, we will make the modifications that all appear. And after that, I think we're gonna publish the, the manual and the, the plans. So what do you use to hold the, the windings into place? The windings on the place, uh, you mean these bolts, uh, these are Cooper bolts and they use for, for plumbery. Uh, these bolts like, take the, fix the, the coil mm -hmm. to the stator. Okay. Uh, I, the, um, if you want, uh, at the at Discord, I can share after uh, some 3D pictures of the, of the coil fixed to the stator. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very simple. You make the, the, I didn't put the pictures on the presentation, but the coil winder, it's, it uses the same hub, but with a different uh, axle. This axle, we put the core of the, of the windings. So we make the winding of the coil and we extract this, this core with the winding all together. And we put a new one and we make this process six times for the six coils. When we okay. have the six coils, we bolt them to the stator and they got fixed on the on the stator and the stator to the hub. Yeah, what we've seen with a lot of uh, classes or school classes 
So what they like to do is they build a wind turbine, but then you have to knock it down again, take it all apart. And sometimes you have to buy some more material to be able to remake the same thing because they'll use it again for another class and another class. And so that's why I was wondering around how, how to do things that can be completely taken apart and completely put back together again. No, uh, the main idea is for sending one kit for a kid or for a group of kids. So they, if there's a group, the turbine will stay at the school. Uh, the only thing you can disassemble is the windings, but all the rest of the turbine can be disassembled. Uh, and the blades, the blades have a glue, yeah. so you can uh, reassemble them. But the main idea is to set to the turbine to send it to one kid. He assembles the whole turbine, and it's uh, like given to him. He can keep it and use it on whatever he likes. Okay, many thanks, uh, Damien, for your uh, presentation. No, you're welcome. Uh, well, uh, yeah, very interesting design. What uh, a ton of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the manual is 80 pages with a lot of drawings, so it's been a lot of time working. And I've been learning how to 3D model over the process, so I, it was a very interesting work. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. I wow. <laughs> <laughs> Super. I think that, that we launch uh, a, a bunch of uh, of discussions on the Discord uh, on the Education <laughs> Working Group Discord uh, channel <laughs> about that. Um, okay. I think this is. Uh, close to be the time uh, to finish this uh, education session. Before uh, finishing, I'd like to thank uh, a lot all the, the panelists that uh, made the effort to put, to synthesize uh, their work into presentations and uh, display very different and complementary material to us uh, today. Um, yeah, if uh, we can upload uh, in your room, so <laughs> I think uh, no, no, it's a, it's a very big, uh, very big work that they have done. Many thanks to them. Um, before uh, we finish, um, I'd like to uh, to intro to introduce the wiki project uh, that I have talked about in the introduction session, and. In fact, uh, we have seen uh, with Manuel that uh, other alternatives are possible, and it, uh, it depends of uh, what we want as a ed educational uh, working group. What do we want as a platform? Uh, what do we want to achieve? And um, I propose that we still start uh, to do some wiki, but we can also start uh, thinking about what we want to do. Do we want uh, to create an online uh, multilingual uh, course? Uh, that could be taught by uh, people all, all around the world. That's, that, that could be a, a possibility too. Um, but I still have this, uh, this project to propose you and it would be amazing to see the, um, the amount of uh, material we could gather on this platform. Um, so I just share uh, for a minute my screen. Mm. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the idea uh, came out from uh, different communities. Actually, uh, Wikipedia is currently having more than three thousand active members, uh, and uh, that led to uh, a lot of articles, a lot of knowledge. So cooperation uh, is working well, uh, even at distance, uh, about knowledge, and people like to share. Uh, their, their knowledge, uh, and it's very exciting to have uh, a common knowledge base uh, about uh, locally manufactured small wind turbines. Mm. So um, I propose you to look uh, into your uh, cupboard and uh, to try to find some material you would like to share. It's also the occasion to actually wonder uh, what you would like to share with everyone, what you would like to keep for you. Um, 
so yeah it's a i think it's a good exercise um so if you want to participate to this uh hackathon um i propose you uh to follow the these steps uh we go through the website just to show you um how this could be achieved mm. So Win Empowerment website, I will share my screen. Okay. So uh, you just go to Wiki Hackathon. So there is uh, an online here page with an introduction about the concept and a step-by-step -step guide about how to participate. Mm. By the way, uh, the link to the wiki is in resources, wiki here. Uh, it's also here, so I can display it to you. Welcome to Win Empowerment Wiki. Mm, so it's uh, possible to log in. Actually, I'm already logged in, but I can log in like that. And then I can choose to edit any page or to create a new one. So for example, if I want to create a page, mm, I'm sure there would be some uh, interesting uh, content on uh, WinKit. So I will uh, type this. Oh no, there is nothing. Okay, I can create a page. And uh, so WinKit, and uh, then uh, you can edit this page. Uh, if you have any material to put on. So you can preview, you can say, oh, wow, amazing. Um, so, so yeah, the, um, the challenge that I propose to you is uh, to upload as much uh, content that you as you have as you might find interesting for the community, um, and um, to coordinate that, I propose you three meetings: uh, one brainstorming meeting on Monday about uh, brainstorming about the content that we could put on. Um, as, so, if you wish to participate to that meeting, you just fill the poll here. Normally, it should be like converted to your time zone. So, this uh, this is for a uh, Monday. Uh, there is another meeting on Wednesday, etc. And the final meeting will be on Friday, which is uh, which will be the day. Um, to actually synthesize, uh, to, to look at all the material that have been put on the wiki uh, and, to and to collaborate, to make a presentation uh, for the hackathon output that will, be, that will take place on Sunday. Um, I think we, we can start also now an open discussion for uh, for uh, 10 minutes and then uh, move on to the Discord uh, because uh, it's getting late uh, in Asia <laughs> and it's been now uh, a few hours we are together. It's been a pleasure for me to uh, to have you all uh, in this session. And uh, yeah, I think that, that we can uh, now uh, open mic and uh, discuss about uh, the next steps of uh, the education working groups um, according to according to what we have uh, like displayed um, in the goals of the working group, uh, which are like sharing knowledge, uh, I can I can yeah we can brainstorm on that in an open discussion. And if you'd like to be involved, it's uh, it's uh, really easy to participate to the Discord and you can attend the meeting during this week. So feel free to now participate to the discussion.
Adrian, for the hackathon, can we just go in and start doing stuff, or do you want folks to wait until the meeting on Monday? Uh, no, we can start. We can start uh, putting content. You can actually put content uh, uh, even uh, in your own language. Uh, there's a small tutorial uh, on the wiki to to show how to do it to do that. Um, so yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, the the meeting on Monday will be brainstorming, but also. Uh, see all, to, uh, all what have been done uh, during the weekend uh, and, uh, and during Monday uh, that will give us ideas. Um, as a um, tool to allow you to uh, brainstorm a little bit now about the objectives uh, of the working group, uh, I propose you to use a post-it uh, online tool uh, so I will share uh, my screen again, and uh, I will give you the link. It's really easy to use. It's called uh, Frama Board or uh, Frama Memo. So you can choose the color you post it. You click on plus, and you say, okay, we could uh, create a wiki, uh, and you just put all our all your ideas here. Uh, the link is really easy. I copy paste it. It's from a memo dot, uh, org, uh, slash wiki wind empowerment. So I put it in, I can't find the chat. I hope you can see uh, the link here. So I put the link on the education uh, channel on the Discord. And let's see what uh, ideas you have. Feel free to, to talk. Normally, I uh, enable the everyone to talk. Okay, so it's supposed that now all of us can talk. Yeah, yeah sure. It's open discussion now about the uh, education working group, uh, next steps, um, etc. And we can... Uh, Hello. Start. Yeah. And just a quick word. Um, as we have seen so many great projects uh, that could be uh, a really strong basis for uh, the educational proposal of wind empowerment in general, could yeah. we somehow based, uh, I don't know, this is an open open reflection, but would it be possible to base our, the, the wind empowerment educational proposal on something that already have been started by some members, for instance, uh, 500 RPMs has done this great work on Moodle. Uh, could it be, for, for instance, possible to make a fork uh, of this platform and, and to translate in different languages to enhance it by all the educational content that the members could bring? Yeah, I think uh, this is all a matter of, uh, of objective. Uh, if the objective is to host uh, some uh, online courses, then yes, that could be a good idea. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, it's all a matter of uh, brainstorming about uh, the next objectives of the working group. Yeah, for, for me, I'd be happy to also put my, I, I do a lot of university courses and um, I'd be happy to put my course material, which is in French online um, but what I've to do something united where we have the same presentation for several different people, I'm not sure if something like that actually really works because um, I, I find it that um, I like to rewrite my presentations and, and do a presentation that I really feel that it 
I express something or I, I say something. I think that's kind of difficult to do if you just use a presentation that, that comes from somewhere else. But having a copy of all of our presentations online that can be shared, that somebody can take a look at, that can copy different ideas or different pieces from, I think it'd be very useful. I think that it can be useful to, to use as a space of uh, uploading documents, uh, structured documents uh, from, this, from different language and uh, to enable people to access uh, to that document. Uh, and uh, and I, I agree with Jay that probably the presentation are very personally for the speaker. So, but not the, maybe the documents or videos or another material that can be useful for, for online courses all around the world. One thing I think that's really interesting as well is seeing uh, so many of the projects also using a little bit of low tech and making fairly small wind turbines, um, which for a moment was kind of the opposite. Everything was getting bigger and bigger. And now going back to having um, small designs, there's uh, Clément Julien who had worked in Senegal on a, on a small one meter machine as well. And it's kind of interesting to see how we can make machines also really cheap really easy to make and that can be built uh, locally and be very accessible in different areas. And I think that's really, really fascinating. From my experience, I, I really had a lot of trouble trying to miniaturize a wind turbine. I, it really gets harder and harder as soon as you try to make a reliable and robust kit that doesn't reuse uh, car parts for the earth, for instance. I've seen, like, I, I had a really bad experience with Wubble by using uh, threaded words and, and bearings. So I, I, I really enjoy having these discussions of uh, and presentation on a new way of kits, of some, some really small power kits, because it's really harder than, than, than something that one can think of. And it, it would be really great to, to foster and, and to share all these uh, ways of making really small kits to propose something uh, more robust together. Yeah, uh, something about the small kits. I think we don't pursue the, the strongest turbine with the small kits. We, we, we prioritize the, the teaching, the pedagogy, but I think uh, with a, lot, a, a bit of development, we can make also a strong uh, small turbines, uh, but uh, it will take time. For example, uh, or this kit we made uh, uses the spinner bearings. We can buy, buy them from, I don't know, but it's like, uh, Forty dollar cents each one, so it's very cheap and very easy and very robust. Uh, they are other parts that they are not uh, that much that much uh, robust, but because they are thinked to to be used as a, a teaching tool more than a power generation tool. Uh, if we change the focus and we go to power generation, we can get a lot more, more power with the same turbine uh, and the similar cost, but uh, to produce power and to be more uh, stronger. Uh, Adrian, about the, the objective, the next uh, objectives of the group, I think it could be a good idea to to try to collect uh, more experience, or more educational experience around the world. Uh, surely there, there are more different experience, not only with the small wind turbines, but uh, with different designs and, and tools. Uh, focus on, ed on education. That's, I think mm. that's the point. 
So mm. maybe, I don't know if the wiki or another space could be great to collect more, uh, more experience and manage to, to show us uh, them because, uh, for example, this session has, has been really interesting. Mm, okay. But we, we, we just have five speakers and probably there are more who can uh, share their works and ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you can see uh, my, on my screen, uh, we are on the post-it board. Uh, on one side of the post-it board, there is a next objectives of the working group. You could put your ideas. So, for example, Manuel uh, was a uh, share uh, material uh, about uh, educational uh, projects. And you can think about, uh, so I, I post uh, the link of the from a memo of this board uh, on the chat. So you can click and put your ideas. Uh, what material would you like to share? What, what do, would you have, uh, what would you like to have in common? So here we have first ideas, links to manual to share and general one as wiki. Uh, so is it uh, the manual, uh, what kind of manual? Is it the manual uh, to build a wind turbine? Or is that uh, like a maintenance manual? So Jay says, it's important for the wiki to be structured from the beginning, to be clear where to put the information and where to find information. Uh, I partially agree. I think uh, we need to have uh, some uh, material first that will give us the idea of how we will structure it. But yeah, that's the purpose of Wednesday meeting to start to structure the, the material. Uh, we could also like um, add a new, a new um, space on the board about uh, what could be the wiki categories. Uh, if you think about uh, some categories uh, to structure the, the wiki, that's a good idea, Jay. Feel free to put some post-its. If you like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, everyone. Well, um, hi everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, it's uh, Guy from Luxembourg. Um, I'm for 15 years. Uh, uh, with my project Wind Mobile and participated uh, several times on uh, wind empowerment um, um, conferences. And uh, which I really liked uh, this evening, it was the, that there was a mixture of uh, different subjects. Um, uh, Jay mentioned his, his business uh, as, uh, from, from different aspects and uh, uh, one one of the aspects touched me really really uh, very much uh, when he said uh, uh, teachers or teachers at the university is, are not willing uh, to uh, to teach uh, people uh, or something like that uh, to to make uh, hands on so that that's not uh, that's not completely true because we, we try to do it uh, but it's not not that easy and uh, we have to to uh, to 
uh, follow some some uh, legal advices, and that that's mainly the problem. So uh, I built a wind turbine with, together with jo Jonathan, and we couldn't couldn't uh, build it up uh, because there were legal aspects which were not uh, not not that true. So it's not not that easy uh, um, this way. So what? At one point, uh, the, the one of the last uh, present, the last presentation with this uh, kit, uh, that's for me. That's, that's a really good uh, point to start on and uh, trying to to set up a, um, a set uh, or a kit which could be used all over the world and. Um, I'm sure that uh, over here in, in Europe we could find some some money to make a tour all over Europe, or maybe uh, just to go to different countries. We, we mentioned already this this idea four or five years ago. Uh, Jessica was uh, uh, Jessica and Luis was with me in Brussels at the European Community. So maybe we we should agree that, that uh, this kit is the basis and uh, as, as you already mentioned, uh, there is some work on it, but it's, it's a good basis and congratulations to, to all of you uh, for the presentations. Uh, I'm very happy uh, participating and uh, would like to, to participate in the future. Mm. Thank you, Guy. You're welcome in the education working group. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry about my English, but I promise I'm going to enhance it a bit. No, English was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but well, yeah, I think this is a very interesting tool. Uh, overall, in in remote places, uh, it's very difficult to reach with the technology and the, and the turbines, and this you this possibility of sending the kit away and teach on distance is it's very very positive. Well, I, I see it from for also from a different uh, different point of view because I'm teaching at the, at the high school and also at the university. We do not find uh, many people uh, which are interested in, in technology. So this is one of the points to, to get them maybe uh, uh, attached to, to technology. And uh, that's yeah. also one of the points which we should not uh, see uh, or which we should see in, in the focus of, of the education group. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Yeah, a lot of ideas, uh, good ideas going on this uh, post-it board. Feel free to participate. So on the wiki content, we have for the moment uh, market assessment, uh, decision pro process flowchart. Uh, so that's an idea of Alfie. Uh, that's, uh, there is an idea of uh, structure, which is a Chrono chronological structure from design to installation. Yeah, so a little bit like the book, the IET book. Um, there is a proposal matching blade design to alternator, which is actually a, yeah, an essential point. Um, next you guys, can you hear me? Yeah, Luis. I just wanted to give a quick suggestion because I wrote it on the on the Q&A, but Nobody picked on it. 
we actually built a wind test rig, which basically is, uh, we used a, an already existing uh, three-phase motor from, you know, that you can buy uh, off the shelf with a voltage, uh, with a, sorry, speed controller. So we bought this, these two together. Um, actually, we, we recycled the motor was going to go. It was operating, but we didn't have the speed control. So we bought the speed controller associated with the motor. We got some aluminum, you know, the um, profiles that we cut and we assembled the whole thing. And we had at the end a, a small wind turbine um, a rig, a test rig. Why am I talking about this? Because uh, at the European level or at the university level, <clears throat> Sure, it's interesting to build the wind turbine because it's, it's cool to build a wind turbine. I totally agree. Uh, but in the same course, we can actually build other machines, not only the machine that is welded to go into the tower, but uh, so not only the frame to go to the tower, but frames uh, that can then be used uh, to, to connect machines in uh, test rigs. And this is interesting because then the machine can be reused in a teaching environment, which is more controlled and uh, it's uh, it's more in phase with what we practice in Europe or in not only in Europe but any any institution of education, which is you have a situation where you know the students can then test the technology and, and so on. Is that one or two of these rigs? Train your students to get acquainted with the technology, and then if eventually you send them to the field, or if eventually uh, you go with them to the field, they kind of know what the wind turbine is about, um, and they can uh, they can be more confident to build it, uh, whatever they are. So, and, and, and you know the winter, the the machine, the actual flex machine, actually is, it, it is useful. We don't have to put it on a hide it away in a cupboard because we can't put it up on the on the roof or something like that. So. Uh, we, we did that in Toulouse. Uh, we could share the plans with everybody. I actually shared some of the plans with uh, with Adrian. And uh, Adrian, you cool. I actually so, uh, made the new plans out of it, so I could share it too. So anyway, yeah, so that could be, that could could be interesting. Uh, on the wiki content, that could be a very good idea. Luis, yeah, you, you know, know. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, I was told, I was about to tell to Luis, uh, we have in the secondary school, uh, not my secondary school, but the Ministry of Education of here made a mobile, mobile laboratory with a test bench just like that. So we take this truck uh, with this uh, mobile, uh, mobile place uh, all over the schools in Buenos Aires and all over the country. And we make tests with the, this word, uh, test bench with the turbine and this motor. And we make the students assembly all the system on a circuit board. Yeah, I think that's uh, in terms of education, uh, thinking about uh, the good thing, the interesting thing here, see, if you have a, I don't remember by, I, by heart, but uh, if you have a one or two HP uh, electric machine, it could be an asynchronous or a synchronous motor. Uh, they are not very powerful, but they're powerful enough so that they can actually simulate the wind and wind gusts for very small uh, picket machines. Um, so the one meter machine for instance, one point two meters. So that means that we can actually, at a very low cost, uh, build uh, already a, a quite small uh, wind turbine rig, which you can then use to train people for some reason for some course uh, equipment or something like that. And you can also scale that up. That means that the, the if you have a say the the four point two meter machine, you can you can actually have. Uh, some off-the-shelf 17 kilowatt or more uh, electric machine with its own uh, uh, speed controller. It's kind of expensive, but it's way cheaper than actually building a, a rig uh, for, for, you know, for sometimes you can actually recycle that. You can find those, uh, those machines somewhere. So I think there is some interesting work on that, on building rigs 
uh, so that the students, it's kind of like a middle ground. If you have the rig, you can always use the, your, your Pigot machine on that rig. Uh, if you respect, say, the placement of the three threaded rods for the stator, and, and that, that, should, that should be enough to be sure that it can kind of fit in the rig. Or you can think the rig around that kind of uh, you know, accommodating that. But anyways, that means that you can actually build the machine, uh, use it on the wind turbine that goes on the roof or, or wherever it goes. Uh, but it can actually, if you cannot actually install it on the field, you can actually take that machine, even though if the frame and the tower and the blades, they, they're still there. You can still use them if someday it's possible. But you can take that machine and put it on the rig and test and, and work on it and, and, and try to learn about electric machinery. And that's the kind of interesting, you know, you build your own rig upon which you do your own experiments. That is, could be interesting for a lot of uh, high school, college uh, level. Uh, teaching. Okay, yeah, Karana yeah. is going. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, I have to, I have to, they're about to cut the power, so I just, it's my last uh, note that is left for you guys, but really, it's been an honor working with you guys. I look forward to our next uh, session together and looking forward to the, to the weekly discussion as well. Okay, super. <laughs> that was nice to have you. Thank you, Karana. Very nice to meet you, Karana. Very good work. So, yeah, Alfie has a, a proposal uh, about the wiki, like to, to use a uh, students, uh, like uh, university students uh, projects uh, yeah. to fill the wiki. Adrian, I can, I can quickly Yeah, you can, uh, you can talk about it. Sure. So um, I've just finished uh, university here at uh, the University of Strathclyde doing a PhD. Um, and there is uh, quite a large group of um, students also beginning their PhDs. Um, they have a lot of experience, they've got a lot of support from professors and so on. Um, and in my mind, the best way to learn is to teach. Um, so my proposal would be that I can, I can go to the professors of, of the university and suggest uh, that these students contribute to the wiki, perhaps not on small wind as that's not their area of expertise. Um, but certainly if we're looking for more, um, more workforce uh, to do things like building pages on the fundamentals of wind power, the history of wind power and so on. Um, I think it would be uh, a good opportunity of having that work done uh, so we can focus on the more specific things uh, relating to small scale wind power and rural electrification. Um, the danger of that would be if, if we set these, uh, these students to work uh, without having a structure in place already. Uh, it might get a little messy. So my suggestion would be, uh, it, once a structure is agreed, uh, then we can start, you know, uh, outsourcing, mm. outsourcing this, uh, this work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, super. Um, actually, uh, I, I wanted to show you uh, the Energypedia wiki portal, if you can still see my screen. So this uses the same software as uh, we use, which is DocuWiki. So this is the Energypedia, is a kind of a Wikipedia on energy. Uh, they are doing uh, solar, hydro, bioenergy, wind, improved cooking, productive use, mobility, etc. Um, our friends are uh, at the Vision. Are currently, uh, it's a, they are a partner with Visions, and uh, there is a wind portal. So there's a bunch of things about uh, big wind, uh, a little bit about small scale wind, but nothing about locally manufactured uh, wind, small wind turbines and uh, these kinds of projects. So I think we really have a space. Uh, 
despite uh, there is also a lot of stuff on the internet, we have a space for a locally manufactured uh, small unit combine uh, wiki, uh, something like is uh, member oriented, like that can be useful to the members. Um, yeah, so that's uh, what I wanted to share uh, with you in reaction to what you've just said. So, mm -hmm. yeah. In, uh, in my opinion, that's uh, really interesting to actually get the students doing something useful when they study. Mm -hmm. uh, in my when they pr like, it. Uh, it's a shame to produce a report that is uh, read only by one supervisor and then uh, lost <laughs> forever. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, for my uh, like for my university projects, I always try to. Uh, do something useful, like uh, fill, uh, fill a wiki or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that could definitely be an incentive for pro for students and professors. Uh, so yeah. Uh, sorry, Adrian, just a, a quick point. Um, so you you raised Energypedia there, which I have used in the past before. I'd, I've forgotten about it briefly now. Um, but would a sensible goal be to input our knowledge into that? Because Energypedia is a well-respected and well-used resource. Um, you know, we, we may, it's possible that we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, it's possible yeah. that if, if we can plug yeah. our knowledge in, then yeah. that, that would be a, a good goal. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the, it's good to have uh, something we are not afraid to put content on. Sure. Uh, so, like, uh, if we start our uh, proper wiki and it's getting bigger and bigger and uh, more and more, uh, like, uh, and more and more uh, relevant, uh, we could uh, always move the content to a place that gathers uh, other resources. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's good to gather uh, stuff in one place, so it can benefit to a maximum of people. Yeah. Uh, but in the first, uh, as a first step, I think it's good having a draft and uh, putting content and trying to, to structure it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we we have this uh, this wiki. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Still have twenty people. You can speak. You can speak uh, orally. You can. Uh, you can also uh, say about the the session. That uh, that could be a feedback time too. Like uh, Guy did. Well, for me. It was really good, Adrian. I I told you, yeah, uh, recently. So really nice to to be part of of the of the panelists and, and to listen to other panelists and see all that in this. So now I excited to to see you again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> take take a, yeah, a rest really and recover energy and <laughs> go again. <laughs> Super, thank you, Manuel. Uh, well, uh, it's again, Guy from Luxembourg. Uh, presentation was very good. All the presentation were very good. Uh, very interesting, good structure, good organization. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Well, uh, it was a pleasure to be part of this. Uh, and the same, I'm very happy to be here and to share all this. Uh, always, all the all the presentations were very good. Uh, I think I had a lot to talk with Karana because I'm I very interested in what he's doing there. And well, uh, we'll see you next days. I will try to gather information to take to the wiki. Yeah, super. Thank you. You can even uh, write in Spanish if you like. Okay, so, okay. If you are like, I, there is a functionality to directly upload the document actually. Which yeah. Is here. 
you can so you can decide if you have a, like a word document you could uh, you could actually choose uh, something and import it directly so ah, okay. that's it's the first uh, start to upload uh, stuff on the wiki so, okay. and then uh, yeah we could have uh, several pages uh, with several languages yeah. right right Thank you, Damien. Right. No, thank you, all of you guys. Thank you, Adrian, for all the presentations and all what you do then. Yeah, it's Jonathan here. And uh, I also wanted to say thank you for all the nice presentations. It was really well organized to me. And I really enjoy listening to it. Some really good topics. And I like the vibe of having the whole thing online. It's new for me. And I would love to see you in person. But still, it's, uh, it's great to be here and to collaborate and talk. And I'm looking forward to the next few days. Uh, I like to contribute to the book and to the wiki as well. Looking forward to these meetings and sessions that we will have during the week. And yeah, so thanks to all. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jonathan. And see you tomorrow for chat control panel. Uh, I only I'm gonna have to talk to my students because they know very much better than I to how to use Discord. So I <laughs> I will talk to them so they teach me. <laughs> okay, see you later, guys. I will take around for Discord and see you tomorrow. See you. If we don't have any more uh, comments. Also, in uh, the five minutes, I will close this session because it's okay. recording and uh, it's going to be very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Training course presentations. Sourcing materials in tropical countries. Wow, an interesting topic. Next, so academic research. Great. Well, thank you everybody for uh, participating and uh, see you tomorrow for the measurement session and uh, for the technology working group session. Uh, have a nice end of day.